What's up guys and welcome to the channel FWA4 If you want to find out how to 3D print one of these for yourself Let's go find out how Right so what we need to do We just need to take the 3D print off of the base I am lucky enough to have a magnetic base Which is really good And I'm going to wash them As you can see next to me I've got a vat And it's just full of lukewarm water All you need to do is wash them Wash them through, take off all the supports Just so they're all gone and then what we're going to do is we are then going to make sure they're all cleaned up. Make sure every fit, little bit of resin is off of this. If you want to get this file for yourself, I can put you in touch with the person that designed this for the customer that I made it for. Once you're happy with all of your clean pieces, what you need to do is then you will need to assemble them. But before that, we're going to have to cure it. You could go and cure them in a massive curing station. Uh, any UV light will be fine. But the best thing to do if you've got time and it's you know sunny enough, I put them in my windowsill for a couple of days just to dry them right out. And that was the best solution for me to be able to do that so that they could dry. Um, I had to use a torch inside of the uh, holes just to make sure that they were cured all the way through and that's what I did. Because I decided to not print this at a 40 degree angle, I was trying to put as much of this on one print as I could, then I just had to do them flat with some supports. It's not the best way of doing it, I do recommend using a 40 degree angle, and you will need to sand the ends to that they are flat. So I used a sander here, I'm going to just show you a quick snippet of me in the bottom left hand corner here, just using a sander to do that. You can avoid that by just using the 40 degree angle. I decided to do it flat, but that's just what I decided to do. In the next video, you can see I just decided to flatten the other side just so that they're all flat. And then, you know, I went over it with a little bit of 180 grit sandpaper just to key it up. The bit that you can see on the edge there is just where it's all nice and flat now. And it's easy for us to assemble. If I didn't do this, then the hole would be covered and you wouldn't be able to slot it all together. And you need to be able to slot it all together. When we come to assembling it, which we are going to do real soon, you do need a couple more key components to be able to make it structural so you can hold this and walk around, say you was at Comic-Con and you want to be able to use it and you don't want it to break, then you need it structural. So when I went and grabbed this 299 broom, which was from Home Bargains, I think, and I just cut it down to size. You can get them pretty cheap. I just needed the handle and I just put some tape on the ends just to hold it into place. As you can see there, there's a tape on that end and then the tape on that end and that is all you really need to do. Make sure you have the right length before you decide to cut it down and decide how long and how big you want to have the gun before piecing it. You will need to go and grab a bigger tube like this and we will need to drill a hole into it so that we can fix it into place later on. We don't need to be doing that now but you will need to have that handy when you want to put the end cap on. Just piece your pieces together, make sure that they fit. I know that this is not perfect and there are some mistakes, although in the video it doesn't look like it, there is a few gaps that we are going to be filling in later on and we do need to glue the whole thing together as one piece eventually. So I'm just going through just showing you it all being pieced together. There was a mistake at the end here where it was sagging, where the print didn't come out very good, but all we did is use some car filler again and we just made that section up. All we had to do was just build it up and it was absolutely fine. This end piece here wasn't printed great because I had to sink it into the bed and there is a bit of a gap. There's probably like a five mil gap all the way down, but don't feel, oh no, you know, I'm going to have to throw it away now because you have made a mistake. We will overcome that. And it will take a little bit longer to put it together, but we won't give up. You just have to be patient. Right, so now that you've got your pole, you will need to put some glue on there. And we went and got some two-part resin for this to hold it all together. This is the best thing to use because resin on resin is, in my opinion, the best solution other than using any type of other glue. Just keep it to resin and it's really easy to mix up and it goes off pretty quick, especially the super rapid stuff which we got here. And I'm pretty sure I picked this up from Wilco's or maybe Poundland. It was really, really inexpensive and you can get two part of this resin from Poundland itself. So if you want to go and keep it cheap, then you can do that. So... 
what we need to do is we need to just figure out what section is going to go where and we need to start piecing it together. So I started at the back of the rifle. I'm going to call it a rifle because I'm not really too sure. I know this is from Star Wars and I think it's maybe one of the Mandalorian guns. But I was just sent the file and said, look, do you think you can print this? And I was just like, you know what, challenge accepted. I'm going to try and print it from the customer, but I will be making a video on it. And this is where the video has come from. So... I just wanted to say maybe you wanted to make one of these for yourself. If you do, you can obtain the file, as I said, from the person that created it. And I'm pretty sure that he will either give it to you or sell it to you nice and cheap. But if you want to, make sure you just contact me on any of the social medias. We need to just piece the next piece together. So this is kind of like the end of the gun. But when we put the top section on, you will see that where the scope goes it won't fit together very well but we're just going to just pop the end on here and as I said with the tape that kind of keeps it into place so make sure it's the thickness you want it and just push it down so that section goes down there and then the end which is again resin 3d printed in water washable resin just slots onto the end there and it looks really good I know it doesn't look like it's piecing together very well because of the gaps but we will show you how we are going to be dealing with that in just a moment but I will hold it up and bring it a bit closer just so you can kind of get the idea of how we want it to look as you can see there is a five mil gap just where I didn't print it brilliantly if we did it at a 40 degree angle that would have been fine but then we would have had to get rid of a lot of supports uh, where they would just be eaten into the resin and I wanted to do it this way it isn't the best way of doing it but I'm sure you guys will know how to 3d print the bits that you want to I'm just showing you how to put it together and how to make it look cool we're going to get on to gluing this together we're not going to be doing it in normal speed we're going to be fast forwarding through because we want to make sure that you can see how it's done but not drag the video so that you're bored as you can see there, we have the 2K resin, or the two-part resin, should I say. So you just mix it together, you just piece it how you want to have it, and then you just put it in between the gaps, making sure that they all fit snug. Make sure that they are all together so that there's not really like any movement in the gaps and that it looks straight, because the worst thing is you don't want the side bits to not line up. And this is what we have done here. I will show you once it's all dry now so that you can see it all together. There you go. So there is still a bit of a gap there, but don't worry, we are going to be filling that. But this is kind of really structural now. So it's glued to the pole and it's glued to the pieces. And that resin worked really, really well, as you can see. This filled the gaps. You can just, if you want to, you can use the resin that makes these 3D prints. And if you want to start filling in and using UV light to cure it, you can do that. But I don't see any point. Some of the seams are seamless and they look really, really good. And you will need to just sand away any of the excess resin when it comes to filling the gaps. But the overall performance and the weight of this, you know, it isn't really heavy. But it does feel like you are actually holding a weapon. Just remember, do not pull the trigger because you will snap off the, uh, the trigger handle, which is probably a little bit of an issue. Uh, that could be something that's really bad at a later stage. Right, so once you've done that, you will need to go over the whole thing and you will need to fill all those gaps in. I'm going to show you how we filled those gaps in just using some of this. This is called Dolphin Glaze. You don't have to use Dolphin Glaze. You can just use normal car filler, but just mix up a very small amount. Cut up a, a filler spreader and just slowly fill in the gaps because this will go off quite quickly, especially if I was doing this in the summer. So it will go off really, really quick and just fill in all the gaps that you can. But it's so easy to sand and it works really well with resin. I don't know why, but car filler just seems to be perfect and it doesn't really crack because it's held together so well. It's really easy to do. I will bring it up close for you in a moment just so you can have a look at the gaps and just where everything is. But if there's any excess of this, you just need to be wiping it away, keeping it nice and clean to make less work for you when you're sanding. I do recommend if you are going to be sanding down car filler indoors, uh, please make sure you use extraction or use a dust mask. This stuff is really, really bad to be using in a household. But if you have a hoover nearby or you have something to suck away all the dust, just do that. But if you can, wear goggles as well because you need to stay really, really safe. 
but I'm just going to hold it up so you can see. So what we need to do, once that's cured, that will probably take about 10 to 20 minutes to cure. I would give it half an hour to 45 minutes just to be sure. And then you will need to use some files or some sandpaper. I used 80 grit sandpaper going down to 180 grit. And as you can see here, just shape it just so that the gap is filled. You don't need to worry about it because it will look really good once it's done. Once you're happy with it and you got it outside, wear a dust mask or a spray mask again. And I'm just going to prime this in some dark grey primer. The sad thing about this, guys, is that I didn't get to do all the detailing or the weathering because this isn't mine. As I said, this is the customer's. But it, boy, does this thing look incredible. So as you can see in a moment, with all those gaps that I filled with the filler, you're not even going to notice them because this primer is just going to cover it all up and this is how it will be shipped out when i need to send it away i hope you really really enjoyed this video as much as i did making it guys if you want to see more like this please remember to comment in the comment section down below and i'm going to leave you with a nice image of how this thing turned out so guys please like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one take care now bye bye